this is the next step on how to blind solve the Rubik's Revenge. I'm still explaining commutators, and I'm going through them. Uh, the only one I've explained so far is the three adjacent faces, and I'm going to continue with the commutators. So, um, the next commutator I have is uh, 2 has to go to 15, and 15 has to go to 11. Okay? Whenever you can, I generally always like to solve as many white pieces as I can, except for one. This way, I know I don't have to memorize in the sequence, okay, this center is solved, go to the next one. Instead, I can just say, okay, I solve the center, solve the center, solve the center with each individual commutator. So generally, it takes one or two commutators to solve a center. I could have solved it, I think, earlier if I tried, but I wanted to show you um, how to solve many of these. So, this one goes to location... Uh, 15, which goes to 11, which will solve this piece. Meaning, once this cycle is done, it works just the same way, kind of like as you do the corners. You say, okay, this one's done, start a new cycle. And you would just remember location 4. It's similar, but not exactly the same. So, you look, okay. These two can be exchanged through one single turn, like that. So that's good. However, these two centers are on the same slice. If I perform a UI turn, they will not be. The centers are 2 and 15. At this point, you say OK, and you begin the commutator. So you think, OK. I like to show what it's going to, I want to show what it's going to be like if you held it from the front. I think, OK, my centers are here, here, and here. I have my fingers in all of them. So I say, OK, you turn the slice this way to move the center up here. Perform a U turn, it's now in there. Turn the slice down. Okay, so there's the center. You turn it the opposite way. So I turn the center in like that. Put it back up. I did a uh, UI turn. Now I'm going to do a. Uh, I did a U turn. Now I'm going to do a UI turn. Put the slice down and turn the slice to the side, and then undo my setup move. And now you can, so you can see this piece is solved. This center is solved. This center is solved. Okay, here's an example I like to give. I've, I've wanted to give. Uh, this center, if I follow the normal procedure, 4 goes to 6, and 6 goes to 20. Okay? Normally, if I did that, my white face would be solved. And I don't want my white face to be solved. I want to keep uh, one center um, wrong the whole time. I could do that cycle, if you if I really wanted to. Um, yeah, I could. My center move could be a U-turn, and I could do it. But... Um, I want to keep this center unsolved and solve all of the others. So, what I do is instead I say, okay, instead of going to 6, I'm going to go to 8. And I'm going to cycle 4 to 8. 8 has to go to the yellow face. 4 to 8 to 23. Okay? Now, this is another condition you can be in, where two of the centers are on opposite faces. Okay? Here's what you have to do. First, you think... Okay, 2 goes to 8, and 8 goes to 23. 8 is going to 23. The first thing you think is 8 and 23 cannot be on the same slice. They cannot be on the same slice. Okay? Other than that, 23 can be either here or here, because that is not on the slice that 8 is on. So it, it can be in one of these two locations, and it is. 23 is right there. The next condition is that um, uh, your other edge piece... In this, uh, in this case, it's uh, not edge piece. In this case, center number four must be opposite of uh, really opposite. It should be um, if you performed a double slice turn like this, this center piece is going to end up right there. That is where I have to place my center. You will need a maximum of two setup moves for this. So sometimes you have to turn the UND layers. This time it's a UI turn because in this way. If I did a double slice turn, this center would end up up here. Remember, it's going to appear, it's going to go the opposite face and over one. Okay? That's how I remember it. So, I have to do a UI turn, like that. If in, if in the position this was yellow, you know, let, let's say I had to cycle the other way. So this one, it went 4, 23, um, 8. Then, what I'd do is I'd go through the exact same procedure, except, okay, this center must be on the other slice. You look at it, 
like, um, since 8 has to go to 23, 8 and 23 can't be on the same slice. If 8 had to go to 4, 8 and 4 can't be on the same slice. That's how you're going to have to look at it. Since 8 and 23 are, on the same, are not on the same slice, this can work. I just do my UI turn, and it's set up. You're basically going to do this the same way, except the only, the only difference is you're going to do a two-slice turn. But here's what you do. Since center 8 has to go to 23, you're going to do as you normally did. You turn the slice up. There's location 23. If I do an F turn, and put it down. There you go. It's in place. Next, you're going to do a double slice turn. Undo algorithm 1. Undo algorithm 2. And undo the setup move. And there you go. This piece is solved. So is this piece. Now, 4 wants to, has to go to 16, and 16 has to go to 24. So 4 goes to 16, 16 to 24. Uh, this is another opposite case. So you think, okay, 16 and 24 are not on the same slice, so this works. Um, I do have to perform a setup move, to, so my double slice turn will work. If I do a 2U move, then uh, if I do the double slice turn, this center would be down here, so it works. So you say, okay. What it would look like from the front is truly, you turn this face up, because then you turn the face down, so this center is revealed, so the center comes up from the bottom face. It's a B2 move. However, if I was holding it from the front, this is what I'd do. I wouldn't be looking at the back face, because I want to keep all my faces distinguished. Okay? However, you can turn the faces if you want to. So I do the B2 move. And I turn the slice back down. I do my double slice turn. Put it back up. Do the move. Let's say I undo everything, do a U2 move. I have all my centers right there solved. And I have these four centers incorrect. The next cycle is 4 to... Uh, 12 to 6. 4 to 12 to 6. Now I have to perform a setup move for this. Let's see. I can do an RI move. And there we go. 4 to 12. Right. Um, I have these two exchanging. This one goes down here. I'm going to slice up. U2, slice down. Slice goes over in the opposite way. Undo everything. And the R move. Now I have two centers that are not solved yet. In order to solve these two, um, in order to solve these two, you have to do something a bit different. You save whenever you have a position like this, where you have two centers that you want to solve on adjacent faces, only two that you want to switch. There's no way to only switch two centers. It can't be done. You can't permute centers that way, or any other piece. You can't just switch two pieces on the cube. So what you have to do is you have to cycle three pieces. However, what you're going to do is you're going to cycle a pe another piece on this face. Basically, you're going to cycle like this piece to here, this piece to here, and this piece over here. So technically, it's going to look like it's solved. Really, I cycled three pieces. First, what you have to do is you hold, uh, you always hold, they always turn the cube. So you have your two unsolved centers on your left and top faces. Okay? I'm actually going to finish this up in the next video because I have another case I want to show you. And I can just explain these two. That's the next part on how to blind solve the Rubik's Revenge. Thanks for watching.